Pratityasamupada Sanskrit, Pratityasamupada Pratityasamupada, Pali, Patikasamupada Patikasamupada, commonly translated as dependent origination, or dependent arising, is a key principle in Buddhist teachings, which states that all dharmas phenomena arise in dependence upon other dharmas. If this exists, that exists, if this ceases to exist, that also ceases to exist. The principle is expressed in the links of dependent origination Pali, Sanskrit, in Buddhism, a linear list of twelve elements from the Buddhist teachings which arise depending on the preceding link. Traditionally the list is interpreted as describing the conditional arising of rebirth in samsara, and the resultant dukkha suffering, pain, unsatisfactoriness. An alternate Theravada interpretation regards the list as describing the arising of mental formations and the resultant notion of I and mine, which are the source of suffering. Traditionally, the reversal of the causal chain is explained as leading to the annihilation of mental formations and rebirth. Scholars have noted inconsistencies in the list, and regard it to be a later synthesis of several older lists. The first four links may be a mockery of the Vedic Brahmanic cosmogony, as described in the Hymn of Creation of Veda X, 129 and the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. These were integrated with a branched list which described the conditioning of mental processes, akin to the five skandhas. Eventually, this branched list developed into the standard twelvefold chain as a linear list. While this list may be interpreted as describing the processes which give rise to rebirth, in essence it describes the arising of dukkha as a psychological process, without the involvement of an atman. Etymology and meaning Etymology Pratityasamupada Sanskrit, Pratityasamupada consists of two terms Pratitya, having depended it appears in various Vedas and Upanishads, such as hymns 4.5.14, 7.68.6 of the Rigveda and 19.49.8 of Atharvaveda, in the sense of confirmation, dependence, acknowledge origin. The Sanskrit root of the word is prati asterisk whose forms appear more extensively in the Vedic literature, and it means to go towards, go back, come back, to approach, with the connotation of Observe, learn, convince oneself of the truth of anything, be certain of, believe, give credence, recognize. In other contexts, a related term pratiti asterisk means, going towards, approaching, insight into anything. Samyupada, arising, rise, production, origin. In Vedic literature, it means, spring up together, arise, come to pass, occur, affect, form, produce, originate. The term has been translated into English variously as dependent origination, dependent arising, interdependent co arising, conditioned arising, and conditioned genesis. The term may also refer to the twelve nidanas, Pali, Devadasanidanani, Sanskrit, Devadasanidanani, from Devavasa, twelve, plus nidanani, plural of nidana, cause, motivation, link. Generally speaking, in the Mahayana tradition, pratityasamupada Sanskrit is used to refer to the general principle of interdependent causation, whereas in the Theravada tradition, patikasamupada Pali is used to refer to the twelve nidanas. Topic <laughs> meaning. Topic <laughs> conditionality. The Pratityasamupada teachings asserts neither direct Newtonian-like causality nor a single causality. Rather, it asserts an indirect conditioned causality and a plural causality. The causal link propositions in Buddhism is very different from the idea of causality that developed in Europe. Instead, the concept of causality in Buddhism is referring to conditions created by a plurality of causes that necessarily co-originate phenomena within and across lifetimes, such as karma in one life creating conditions that lead to rebirth in one of realms of existence for another lifetime. The Pratityasamupada principle asserts that the dependent origination is necessary and sufficient condition in both directions. This is expressed in Majjhima Nikaya as when this is, that is, this arising, that arises, when this is not, that is not, this ceasing, that ceases. 
Topic: <laughs> Ontological principle. According to Peter Harvey, pratityasamutpada is an ontological principle, that is, a theory to explain the nature and relations of being, becoming, existence and ultimate reality. Buddhism asserts that there is nothing independent, except the state of nirvana. All physical and mental states depend on and arise from other pre-existing states, and in turn from them arise other dependent states while they cease. The dependent arisings have a causal conditioning, and thus pratityasamutpada is the Buddhist belief that causality is the basis of ontology, not a creator god nor the ontological Vedic concept called universal self Brahman, nor any other transcendent creative principle. The pratityasamutpada ontological principle in Buddhism is applied not only to explain the nature and existence of matter and empirically observed phenomenon, but also to the nature and existence of life. In abstract form, according to Peter Harvey, the doctrine states, that being, this comes to be, from the arising of that, this arises, that being absent, this is not, from the cessation of that, this ceases. There is no first cause from which all beings arose. <laughs> <laughs> Workings of the mind Against Harvey's ontological interpretation, Eviator Shulman argues that, Dependent origination addresses the workings of the mind alone. Dependent origination should be understood to be no more than an inquiry into the nature of the self or better, the lack of a self. Viewing Pratitya Samyutpada as a description of the nature of reality in general means investing the words of the earlier teachings with meanings derived from later Buddhist discourse. Shulman grants that there are some ontological implications that may be gleaned from dependent origination, but that at its core it is concerned with identifying the different processes of mental conditioning and describing their relations." Noah Rankin states that while Buddha suspends all views regarding certain metaphysical questions, he is not an anti-metaphysician, nothing in the text suggests that metaphysical questions are completely meaningless, instead Buddha taught that sentient experience is dependently originated and that whatever is dependently originated is conditioned, impermanent, subject to change, and lacking independent selfhood. Topic. Epistemological principle According to Stephen Laumachus, Pratityasamutpada is also an epistemological principle, that is, a theory about how we gain correct and incorrect knowledge about being, becoming, existence and reality. The dependent origination doctrine, states Peter Harvey, "...highlights the Buddhist notion that all apparently substantial entities within the world are in fact wrongly perceived." We live under the illusion that terms such as I, self, mountain, tree, etc. denote permanent and stable things. The doctrine teaches this is not so. There is nothing permanent anicca, nothing substantial, no unique individual self in the nature of becoming an existence anatta, because everything is a result of dependent origination. There are no independent objects and independent subjects. According to the Pratityasamutpada doctrine, there is fundamental emptiness in all phenomena and experiences. Topic: <laughs> Twelve Nidanas. The Twelve Nidanas (Pali: Devadasanidanani, Sanskrit: Devadasanidanani) is a linear list of twelve elements from the Buddhist teachings, which are pratityasamutpada, arising depending on the previous link. According to Shulman, the twelve links are pratikasamutpada. In the suttas, dependent origination refers to nothing else but the process of mental conditioning as described by the twelve nidanas. Traditionally the standard list is interpreted as describing the conditional arising of rebirth in samsara, and the resultant dukkha suffering, pain, unsatisfactoriness. An alternate interpretation regards the list as describing the causal arising of mental formations and the resultant dukkha. Traditionally, the reversal of the causal chain is explained as leading to the annihilation of mental formations and rebirth. Scholars have noted inconsistencies in the list, and regard it to be a later synthesis of several older lists. Topic several series There are various Nidana lists throughout the early Buddhist texts and collections such as the Pali Nikayas, the most common of which is a list of twelve Nidanas which appears in both Pali texts and Mahayana sutras such as the Salastamba Sutra. 
The dependent origination doctrine is presented in Vinaya Pataka 1.1-2, in abbreviated form in Samyutta Nikaya 2.1, 2.19 and 2.76, Diga Nikaya Sutta 1, the Brahmahala Sutta, verse 3.71 describes six nidanas, t hey experience these feelings by repeated contact through the six sense bases, feeling conditions craving, craving conditions clinging, clinging conditions becoming, becoming conditions birth, birth conditions aging and death, sorrow sorrow, lamentation, sadness and distress. Diga Nikaya, Sutta 14 describes ten links, and in Sutta 15 nine links are described, but without the six sense bases, they experience these feelings by repeated contact through the six sense bases, feeling conditions craving, craving conditions clinging, clinging conditions becoming, becoming conditions birth, birth conditions aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, sadness and distress. Descriptions of the full sequence of twelve links can be found elsewhere in the Pali Canon, for instance in section 12 of the Samyutta Nikaya, now from the remainderless fading and cessation of that very ignorance comes the cessation of fabrications. From the cessation of birth, then aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress, and despair all cease. Such is the cessation of this entire mass of stress and suffering. Twelve-fold chain Topic: <inaudible> Causal chain Nidanas are co-dependent events or phenomena, which act as links on a chain, conditioning and depending on each other. When certain conditions are present, they give rise to subsequent conditions, which in turn give rise to other conditions. Phenomena are sustained only so long as their sustaining factors remain. This causal relationship is expressed in its most general form as follows. When this exists, that comes to be. With the arising of this, that arises. When this does not exist, that does not come to be. With the cessation of this, that ceases. This natural law of this, that causality is independent of being discovered, just like the laws of physics. In particular, the Buddha applied this law of causality to determine the cause of dukkha. Understanding the relationships between the phenomena that sustain dukkha is said to lead to nibbana, complete freedom from samsara. Topic: <reversal>, reversal. Traditionally, the reversal of the causal chain is explained as leading to the annihilation of mental formations and rebirth. From the remainderless fading and cessation of ignorance comes the cessation of volitional fabrications, etc. The Upanishad Sutta in the Samyutta Nikaya describes the reversed order, in which the causes for enlightenment are given. This application of the principle of dependent arising is referred to in Theravada exegetical literature as transcendental dependent arising. The chain in this case is suffering, dukkha, faith. Sada, Joy, pamoha, pamuja. Rapture, pity. Tranquility, pasadi. Happiness, sukha. Concentration, samadhi. Knowledge and vision of things as they are, dasana. Disenchantment with worldly life, nibbida. Dispassion, viraga. Freedom, release, emancipation, vimutti, a synonym for nibbana. Knowledge of destruction of the cankers, asava kainyana. Interpretation of the Twelve Nidanas Theravada Within the Theravada Buddhist tradition, the Twelve Nidanas are considered to be the most significant application of the principle of dependent origination. Rebirth The Nikayas themselves do not give a systematic explanation of the Nidana series. As an expository device, the commentarial tradition presented the factors as a linear sequence spanning over three lives, thus shifting the theme from a single conception and birth to a sequence of incarnations, roughly speaking. The twelve Nidanas were interpreted by Buddhaghosa c. 5th century CE of the Sri Lankan Mahavihara tradition as encompassing three successive lives, as outlined in his influential Visuddhimagga. 
According to Buddhaghosa, the first two nidanas, namely ignorance and motivation, relate to the previous life and forecast the destiny of the person. The third to the tenth nidanas relate to the present life, beginning with the descent of vijnana consciousness, perception, into the womb. The last two nidanas birth and death represent the future lives conditioned by the present causes. Because of Buddhaghosa's vast influence in the development of Theravada scholasticism, this model has been very influential in the Theravada school. Topic: <laughs> Arising of mental processes. Yet the 12 nidanas have also been interpreted within the Theravada tradition as explaining the arising of psychological or phenomenological processes in the present moment. There is scriptural support for this as an explanation in the Abhidharmakosa of Vasubandhu, insofar as Vasubandhu states that on occasion, the twelve parts are realized in one and the same moment. Prayud Payuto notes that in Buddhaghosa's Sammohavinodani, a commentary to the Vibhanga of the Abhidhamma Pitaka, the principle of dependent origination is explained as occurring entirely within the space of one mind moment. According to Prayud Payuto there is material in the Vibhanga which discusses both models, the three lifetimes model and the phenomenological mind-moment model. This thesis is also defended by Bhikkhu Buddhadasa's Patikasamuppada, practical dependent origination. In this interpretation, birth and death refer not to physical birth and death, but to the birth and death of our self-concept, the emergence of the ego. According to Buddhadasa, Dependent arising is a phenomenon that lasts an instant, it is impermanent. Therefore, birth and death must be explained as phenomena within the process of dependent arising in everyday life of ordinary people. Right mindfulness is lost during contacts of the roots and surroundings. Thereafter, when vexation due to greed, anger, and ignorance is experienced, the ego has already been born. It is considered as one birth. Topic. Sarvastivada According to Akira Hirakawa and Paul Groner, the Three Lives model, with its embryological interpretation which links dependent origination with rebirth was also promoted by the Sarvastivadin school a North Indian branch of the Stavira Nikaya as evidenced by the Abhidharmakosa of Vasubandhu Florida, 4th to 5th century CE. The Abhidharmakosa also outlines three other models of the twelve nidanas, that were used by the Sarvastivada schools together with the three lifetimes model. Instantaneous, all twelve links are present in the same instant. Prolonged, the interdependence and causal relationship of dharmas or phenomenal events arising at different times. Serial, the causal relationship of the twelve links arising and ceasing in continuous series of moments. <laughs> Yogacara Asanga 4th century CE groups the 12 nidanas into four groups, 1 to 3 cause of dharmas, 4 to 7 dharmas, 8 to 10 cause of suffering, 11 to 12 suffering. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Tibetan Buddhism. The Bhavachakra Sanskrit, Pali, Bhavachakra, Tibetan, srid pi kor lo is a symbolic representation of samsara or cyclic existence. It is found on the outside walls of Tibetan Buddhist temples and monasteries in the Indo-Tibetan region, to help ordinary people understand Buddhist teachings. The three fires sit at the very center of the schemata in the Bhavachakra and drive the whole edifice. In Himalayan iconographic representations of the Bhavakakra such as within Tibetan Buddhism, the three fires are known as the three poisons which are often represented as the Gankiel. The Gankiel is also often represented as the hub of the Dharmakakra. Tsongkhapa, following a Sangha, explains how the twelve nidanas can be applied to one life of a single person, two lives of a single person, and three lives of a single person. Discussing the three lifetimes model, Alex Wayman states that the Theravada, Sarvastivada interpretation is different from the Vajrayana view, because the Vajrayana view places a bardo or an intermediate state between death and rebirth, which is denied by the Theravadins and Sarvastivadins. This denial necessitated placing the first two nidanas of the dependent origination chain into the past life. The Tibetan Buddhism tradition allocates the twelve nidanas differently between various lives. Topic. 
Development of the Twelve Nidanas Synthesis of older versions Combination of older lists According to Frauwallner, the twelvefold chain is a combination of two lists. Originally, the Buddha explained the appearance of dukkha from tana thirst, craving. This is explained and described in the second part, from tana on forwards. Later on, under influence of concurring systems, the Buddha incorporated a via ignorance as a cause of suffering into his system. This is described in the first part, which describes the entry of Vijnana into the womb, where the embryo develops. Frauwallner notes that, "...the purely mechanical mixing of both the two parts of the causal chain is remarkable and enigmatical," noting that, "...contradictory thoughts stand directly near one another in the oldest Buddhistic ideas." Many times, Frauwallner explains this as a deficiency in systematization, the inability to mix different views and principles into a great unity." According to Schumann, the twelvefold chain is a later composition by monks, consisting of three shorter lists. These lists may have encompassed Nidana 1-4, 5-8, and 8-12. The progress of this composition can be traced in various steps in the canon. Lambert Schmidhausen argues that the twelvefold list is a synthesis from three previous lists, arguing that the three lifetimes interpretation is an unintended consequence of this synthesis. Topic. Branched and looped version Roderick S. Bucknell analyzed four versions of the Twelve Nidanas, to explain the existence of various versions of the Pratitya Samyupada sequence. The Twefold version is the standard version, in which Vijnana refers to sensual consciousness. According to Bucknell, the standard version of the twelve nidanas developed out of an ancestor version, which in turn was derived from two different versions, in which vijnana is differently explained. In the so-called branched version, which is not strictly linear, but connects a couple of branches, vijnana is derived from the coming together of the sense organs and the sense objects, a description which can also be found in other sutras. The three of them constitute fasa contact. From there on, the list is linear. In the Sutta Nipata version, which is altogether linear, Vijnana is derived from Aviya ignorance, and Sankara activities. RSB, also translated as volitional formations. The Mahanadana Sutta describes a looped version, which is also further linear, in which Vijnana and Nama Rupa condition each other. According to Bucknell, this looped version is derived from the branched version. According to Bucknell, some accounts of the looped version state explicitly that the chain of causation goes no further back than the loop. The Mahanadana further explains Vijnana as consciousness that descends into the mother's womb at the moment of conception. Waldron notes that Vijnana here has two aspects, namely, samsaric Vijnana and cognitive consciousness. Quote, quote, samsaric Vijnana is Consciousness per se, the basic sentience necessary for all animate life, which descends into the womb at the time of conception. Cognitive consciousness is related to the senses and the sense objects. It is samsaric vijnana, which forms, in Buddhist thought, the connection between two lives. While these two aspects were largely indifferentiated in early Buddhist thought, these two aspects and their relation was explicated in later Buddhist thought, giving rise to the concept of alaya vijnana, while the branched version refers directly to the six sense objects, the looped version, and the standard version instead name it nama rupa, which eventually was misinterpreted as name and form. In the traditional sense, this created New causal series, which made it possible to interpret the beginning of the chain as referring to rebirth, just like the end of the chain. In line with this reinterpretation, Vijnana became the consciousness that descends into the mother's womb at conception, while Nama Rupa became the mind body complex that experiences contact and so on. Bucknell further notes that the branched version 
in which Nama Rupa refers to the six classes of sense objects, corresponds with Buddhadasa's psychological interpretation of the twelve nidanas. The looped version, in which Vijnana corresponds with rebirth consciousness, corresponds with defenders of the traditional interpretation, such as Nyanataloka. According to Bucknell, the linear list, with its distortions and changed meaning for Nama Rupa and Vinaya, may have developed when the list came to be recited in reverse order. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Commentary on Vedic cosmogony. Alex Wayman has argued that the idea of dependent origination may precede the birth of the Buddha, noting that the first four causal links starting with avidya in the twelve nidanas are found in the cosmic development theory of the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad and other older Vedic texts. Jeffrey Hopkins notes that terms synonymous to pratityasamutpada are apekshasamutpada and prapyasamutpada. According to Kalupahana, the concept of causality and causal efficacy where cause produces an effect because a property or svada energy is inherent in something appears extensively in the Indian thought in the Vedic literature of the second millennium BCE, such as the tenth mandala of the Rigveda and the Brahmana's layer of the Vedas. Sayam Katam Adikatam, self -causation. This theory posits that there is no external agent God necessary for a phenomenon, there is svata inner energy in nature or beings that lead to creative evolution, the cause and the effect are in the essence of the evolute and inseparable found in the Vedic and particularly Upanishadic proto-Hindu schools. Paramkatam external causation posits that something external god fate past karma or purely natural determinism causes effects found in materialistic schools like charvaka as well as fate driven schools such as ahivika Sayam paramkatam internal and external causation combination of the first two theories of causation found in some jainism theistic proto hindu schools Asayam aparam katam neither internal nor external causation, this theory denies direct determinism and posits fortuitous origination, asserting everything as a manifestation of a combination of chance found in some proto-Hindu schools. A similar resemblance has been noted by Jurowitz, who argues that the first four nidanas resemble the hymn of creation of Rigveda X, 129, in which avya ignorance leads to kama desire, which is the seed of vijnana consciousness. This consciousness is a Singular consciousness, Jurowitz, non dual consciousness, Gombrich, reflexive, cognizing itself, Gombrich. When the created world, name and form, evolves, pure consciousness manifests itself in the world. It mistakenly identifies itself with name and form, losing sight of its real identity. The Buddha mimicked this creation story, making clear how the entanglement with the world drive a human being into deeper and deeper ignorance about himself. According to Jurowitz, the Buddha may have picked the term Nama Rupa, because, "...the division of consciousness into name and form has only the negative value of an act which hinders cognition." According to Gombrich, the Buddhist tradition soon lost sight of this connection with the Vedic worldview. It was aware that at this point there is the appearance of an individual person, which the Buddha referred to as the five skandhas, denying a self atman separate from these skandhas. The Buddhist tradition equated rupa with the first skanda, and nama with the other four. Yet, as Gombrich notes, samkara, vijnana, and vedana also appear as separate links in the twelvefold list, so this akashan can't be correct for this nidana. According to Jura Wisk, all twelve nidanas show similarities with the Vedic cosmogony. They may have been invoked for educated listeners, to make the point that suffering arises in dependence on psychological processes without an Atman, thereby rejecting the Vedic outlook. According to Gombrich, following Frau Wallner, the twelve fold list is a combination of two previous lists, the second list beginning with Tana. Thirst. The cause of suffering is described in the second noble truth. The first list consists of the first four Nidanas, which parody the Vedic Brahmanic cosmogony, as described by Jurowitz. According to Gombrich, the two lists were combined, resulting in contradictions in its negative version. Gombrich further notes that Jurowitz's interpretation also makes it unnecessary to accept the complicated, indeed contorted, interpretation favored by Buddhahosa, that the chain covers three lives of the individual. <laughs> Five skandhas According to Mathieu Boisvert, Nidana 3-10 correlate with the five skandhas. 
Boisvert notes that sana perception is not part of the twelvefold chain, but does play a role in the prevention of the arising of the samkaras. Likewise, Waldron notes that the anasaya underlying tendencies are the link between the cognitive processes of fasa contact and vedana feeling and the afflictive responses of tana craving and upadana grasping. According to Schumann, the nidanas are a later synthesis of Buddhist teachings, meant to make them more comprehensible. Comparison with the five skandhas shows that the chain contains logical inconsistencies, which can be explained when the chain is considered to be a later elaboration. This way it is explainable that nama rupa n consciousness in the ninefold are the beginning or start, while in the twelvefold chain they are preceded by ignorance and formations. Those can only exist when nama rupa n consciousness are present. Schumann also proposes that the twelvefold is extended over three existences, and illustrate the succession of rebirths. While Buddhaghosa and Vasubandhu maintain a 2 8 2 schema, Schumann maintains a 3 6 3 scheme, putting the five skandhas aside the twelve nidanas. Four Noble Truths The second and third truths in the Four Noble Truths are related to the principle of dependent origination, with dependent arising elaborating the arising of suffering. The second truth applies dependent origination in a direct order, while the third truth applies it in inverse order. <laughs> Comparison of lists Altogether the various lists combine as follows. Topic. Sequence of stages prior to birth According to Isil Mazard, the twelve nidanas are a description of a sequence of stages prior to birth, as an orthodox defense against any doctrine of a supernal self or soul of any kind, excluding an unmentioned life force jiva that followers could presume to be additional to the birth of the body, the arising of consciousness, and the other aspects mentioned in the Twelve Links formula." According to Mazard, many later sources have digressed from the basic theme and subject matter of the original text, knowingly or unknowingly. Karma <laughs> The notion of karma is integrated into the list of twelve nidanas, and has been extensively commented on by ancient Buddhist scholars such as Nagarjuna. Karma consists of any intentional action, whether of body or speech or in mind, which can be either advantageous merit or disadvantageous demerit. Both good and bad karma sustain the cycle of samsara rebirth and associated dukkha, and both prevent the attainment of nirvana. According to Nagarjuna, the second causal link sankara, motivations, and the tenth causal link bhava, gestation, are two karmas through which sentient beings trigger seven sufferings identified in the twelve nidanas, and from this arises the revolving rebirth cycles. To be liberated from samsara and dukkha, asserts Buddhism, the dependent origination doctrine implies that the karmic activity must cease. One aspect of this causal link breaking is to destroy the deeply seated propensities, festering predilections, asavas, which are karmic causal flow because these lead to rebirth. Topic: <laughs> Sunyata emptiness. Topic: <laughs> Madhyamaka. In the Madhyamaka philosophy, to say that an object is empty is synonymous with saying that it is dependently originated. Nagarjuna equates emptiness with dependent origination in Mulamadhyamakakarika 24.18-19. Whatever arises dependently I explained as empty. Thus dependent attribution is the middle way. Since there is nothing whatever that is not dependently existent, for that reason there is nothing whatsoever that is not empty. In his analysis, svabhava is somewhat redefined from the Sarvastivada Vebasika interpretation to mean, inherent existence or self-characterization. 
Nagarjuna notably rejected the idea of dharmas containing svabhava, meaning a self-sustaining, permanent, or unchanging identity. If a dharma was inherently what it was from its own side, what need would there be for causes and conditions to bring that object into being? If any object was characterized by being itself, then it has no need to dependently rely on anything else. Further, such an identity or self-characterization would prevent the process of dependent origination. Inherents would prevent any kind of origination at all, for things would simply always have been, and things would always continue to be. Madhyamaka suggests that uncharacterized mere experiences—with no specific qualities—are designated by conceptual labels, and this brings them into being see Prasangika merely designated causality. According to Nagarjuna, even the principle of causality itself is dependently originated, and hence it is empty. Madhyamaka is interpreted in different ways by different traditions. In the Tibetan Gelug school, all dharmas are said to lack any inherent existence, according to the Tibetan scholar Tsongkhapa in his Ocean of Reasoning. <laughs> Tibetan Buddhism In the Dzogchen tradition of Tibetan Buddhism, the concept of dependent origination is considered to be complementary to the concept of emptiness. Specifically, this tradition emphasizes the indivisibility of appearance and emptiness—also known as the relative and absolute aspects of reality. Appearance relative truth refers to the concept that all appearances are dependently originated. Emptiness absolute or ultimate truth refers to the concept that the nature of all phenomena is emptiness lacking inherent existence. In Mitham Rinpoche's Beacon of Certainty, this relationship is explained using the metaphor of the reflection of the moon in water. According to this metaphor, the nature of all phenomena is like the reflection of the moon in water completely lacking inherent existence. However, the appearance of the moon in the water is an expression of dependent origination. The appearance is completely dependent upon causes and conditions. One of the founders of Tibetan Buddhism, Pamamsambhava, emphasized his respect for this relationship as follows Though my view is as spacious as the sky, my actions and respect for cause and effect are as fine as grains of flour. <laughs> Interdependence Huayan school The Huayan school taught the doctrine of the mutual containment and interpenetration of all phenomena, as expressed in Indra's net. One thing contains all other existing things, and all existing things contain that one thing. This philosophy is based in the tradition of the great Madhyamaka scholar Nagarjuna and, more specifically, on the Avatamsaka Sutra. Regarded by D. T. Suzuki as the crowning achievement of Buddhist philosophy, the Avatamsaka Sutra elaborates in great detail on the principle of dependent origination. This sutra describes a cosmos of infinite realms upon realms, mutually containing one another. Thich Nhat Hanh Thich Nhat Hanh states Pratitya Samyupada is sometimes called the teaching of cause and effect, but that can be misleading, because we usually think of cause and effect as separate entities, with cause always preceding effect, and one cause leading to one effect. According to the teaching of interdependent co-arising, cause and effect co-arise and everything is a result of multiple causes and conditions. In the sutras, this image is given. Three cut reeds can stand only by leaning on one another. If you take one away, the other two will fall. In Buddhist texts, one cause is never enough to bring about an effect. A cause must, at the same time, be an effect, and every effect must also be the cause of something else. This is the basis, states Han, for the idea that there is no first and only cause, something that does not itself need a cause. Topic: <laughs> Tibetan Buddhism. Sogyal Rinpoche states all things, when seen and understood in their true relation, are not independent but interdependent with all other things. A tree, for example, cannot be isolated from anything else. It has no independent existence, states Rinpoche. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. 
Comparison with Western philosophy J. L. Garfield states that Mula Madhyamakakarika uses the causal relation to understand the nature of reality, and of our relation to it. This attempt is similar to the use of causation by Hume, Kant, and Schopenhauer as they present their arguments. Nagarjuna uses causation to present his arguments on how one individualizes objects, orders one's experience of the world, and understands agency in the world. The concept of pratityasamutpada has also been compared to Western metaphysics, the study of reality. Schilbrach states that the doctrine of interdependent origination seems to fit the definition of a metaphysical teaching, by questioning whether there is anything at all. Hoffman disagrees, and asserts that pratityasamutpada should not be considered a metaphysical doctrine in the strictest sense, since it does not confirm nor deny specific entities or realities. See also Abhidharma, an analytical part of the Tripitaka, the Buddhist canon Reality in Buddhism Three marks of existence Topic Notes Equals equals quotes <laughs>